Angela Berger. Welcome to my channel. Today I have for you the case of Sofia Juarez. She was four years old at the time of her disappearance back in February of 2003. Now this is an older case, but the reason that I want to talk about this case with you today is because some new information just came out that may lead to solving this case. So let's get right into it. Sofia Lucerna Juarez was born on February 5th, 1998 to Maria Juarez and Andres Garcia. Maria, Sofia's mother, was very young at the time of her birth. She was only 16 years old. Sofia and Maria lived with Maria's parents, so that would be Sofia's grandparents and Maria's six brothers. Um, so there were a lot of people um, in the house. They lived in the east part of Kennewick, Washington. Sofia Juarez was described as a happy child. She enjoyed playing with Barbies, watching cartoons, and coloring. And she was also very shy, so it wasn't like her to go up and talk to strangers. You know, if she didn't know someone, she was very shy around them. Sophia was also super excited because her birthday was coming up. It's actually the day before her birthday. It was February 4th, 2003. So Sophia at this time was four years old and the next day she was going to turn five. So she was super excited about this. And she was playing a video game with a 10 year old relative. It was about eight o'clock at night and her grandmother's boyfriend Jose Lopez Torres, he said that he was going to go to a convenience store that was about five blocks away um, to get some things. So when Sophia heard that, she asked her mother if she could go with Jose. Her mother said yes and gave her a dollar so that she could buy some candy. And then Sophia left. So 45 minutes pass and Jose comes back to the house. And Sophia is not with him. So then everyone wonders, well, where is Sophia? Uh, they look around, they can't find her anywhere. And so they report her missing. Jose had no idea that she had even wanted to go to the store with him. He didn't know that she was trying to tag along. Police questioned everyone in the house. They questioned Jose because Sophia was supposed to have gone with him. And he said that he had no idea that she even wanted to go with him. He hadn't seen her at all. And no one had actually seen her when she left the house. Authorities also questioned Sophia's father, who lived in nearby Pasco. He was cleared. Um, Jose was also cleared. And no one in the family was considered a suspect. The authorities did believe that Sophia had been abducted. So they released an Amber Alert. And this was actually the first ever Amber Alert to be put out in Washington state. Over 100 people came out to search for Sophia. Dogs tracked her scent, but they found nothing. An Army National Guard helicopter used some infrared heat sensing equipment to do an aerial search, and they found nothing. The Sheriff's Office also searched the shoreline of the Columbia River. The Columbia River is relatively close to where Sophia had disappeared, and I can, you can see that on the map. A dive team also searched the river, but again, they found nothing. A 35-year-old man made some anonymous phone calls claiming that he knew where Sophia was. This turned out not to lead to anything, so he was charged with telephone harassment. Sophia's grandmother, Ignacia, and her mother, Maria, they traveled to Mexico to see if they could have any luck finding Sofia there. They went to Puebla and Guadalajara. But I'm not sure exactly what led them um, to think that Sofia might be there. I couldn't find any information um, about that, but just that they went there to try um, to find her. On August 12th, 2006, so this would be this would be three years after Sophia went missing. A 17 year old boy and his grandfather were outside picking up litter um, at a farm in Eastern Washington. And as they were picking up 
this litter, the boy picked up something a white and he thought it was melted PVC. But upon further inspection, he realized that what he had was a piece of bone and he thought it was a skull. He showed it to his grandfather and his grandfather agreed that it looked like it was part of a skull. So they contacted authorities. So this, this farm was located 10 miles north of Connell near an access road that ran parallel to US 395. Usually the field was full of like waist high grass. And if that had been the case now, they wouldn't have been able to see these bones. But in July, so two months prior, there had been this car that had some issues and the car actually caught the field on fire. So that's why um, the grass was low at the time and they were able to see this. The area where the bones were found was about 52 miles away from where Sophia went missing. There was speculation that these bones could have belonged to Sophia or to a boy named Cody Hayes, who was 11, and he had run away from his home in Katias, I think is how you say it, Tias, Washington, in 2004. The FBI evidence recovery team, they came out and searched a 100 acre radius around where the bones had been found. They found a few more bone fragments, but you know, really nothing else. Investigators were able to confirm that those bones were indeed human bones. However, scientists at the University of North Texas were unable to extract enough DNA to figure out who the bones belonged to. The bones had also been damaged by the fire. So I am curious um, to see if maybe today's technology, with today's technology, we would be able to figure that out. It would be interesting to see. Uh, sadly, Sophia's mother, Maria, passed away in 2009. So at that time, she would have only been um, 26 years old. So that's very sad that she passed away without ever finding out what happened to her daughter. On the 18th anniversary of Sophia's disappearance in February of 2021, Washington State Patrol's Homeward Bound program they put up these big like billboard pictures of Sophia at the time of her disappearance and also an age progression photo and information about her disappearance on the side of semi-trailers. And these semi-trailers -tra would go up the West Coast and they'd also go into Canada and into Mexico. The Kennewick Sheriff's Department set up a website with information about Sophia's um, case and also a place for people to submit tips. So after they set up this website and these trucks were going out, 75 tips came in. In March of 2021, a TikTok video came out by a man named, well, his channel was called Aka Iaya. He was in Sinaloa, Mexico. In the video, he goes to a park and he interviews a woman. When he gets there, she's laying down on this bench and he approaches her and they start talking about like, her birthday. She says that she's 22 years old, but she doesn't really like to celebrate her birthday because of something that happened to her in the past. She says that she doesn't know where she's from, that she might be from Japan or from Italy and it's because she was kidnapped when she was younger. In the video, she says that if any of her family members are watching, that they should come and find her. And then the man also says that if anybody's watching this, you know, try to get in touch with her. So this became viral because a lot of people started commenting and posting that she might be Sophia Waters. And I'll put the pictures up of her and Sophia as a child, and then of this woman with some of the age progression pictures, you know, and you can see that there, you know, there may be a resemblance. Kennewick authorities, they were informed about the video. They would like to get some DNA from this woman. They would like to track this woman down to get some DNA from her to compare it with Sophia's DNA to see if it's a match. 
I will put a link to the video in the information below. It is in Spanish. So if you, you know, if you can speak Spanish, then you'll be able to understand it. But basically I gave you like a rundown of what was said in the video. Now this man who runs the channel, Aka Iaya, he has gone back to the park to try to find the woman. He hasn't found her, but he talked to people in the park and they say that she frequents the park. So, you know, if they decide to continue looking for her, there's a good chance they might find her there. He and a couple friends made another video, which I'll put a little bit of it in there, but it is also in Spanish. But I speak Spanish, so I could tell you what they are saying in the video. <laughs> Ok, no, sí, 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 está, está muy bien. Nada más yo pues quería, quería tener comunicación nada más. No, no. E ella, perdón, ¿dónde la tienen a ella ahorita? Ah, ok. So in the video, it's supposedly a relative of this woman. And this relative says that the woman is her aunt. And that she is not Sofia Juarez. She said that the woman's name is Unibi. The woman also said that she'd be willing to come downtown to meet with this man and talk to him more. She also said that she didn't know where Unibi was, you know, at this time. In Sofia. We didn't expect this at all. <laughs> Usually the month of February, it's just like, you know, we deal with that and, you know, we get past it and um and then you know we kind of just wait and now it's like you know we're getting a little anxious her. we do see some similarities um as far as like our families um you know with that girl um it was nerve-wracking um obviously we're like all literally at the edge of our seat of like you know what's what's gonna happen what are the steps so as i mentioned before when the truck program came out there was a great renewed interest in Sophia's case, and that led to a lot of tips coming in. Another one of these tips was from a witness that authorities believe is very credible. This witness saw a girl who matched Sophia's description, and she was in the area where Sophia would have been at the time of her disappearance. So that was along South Washington Street near East 15th Street. So this witness saw this girl walking down the street. She saw a person approach the girl. And then the girl started crying. The girl was crying as this person led her away. Now, authorities do have a detailed description of that person. The person who was seen leading Sophia away, they have not released that information to the public. The witness also saw a 1970s or 1980s van that was a light blue or gray color. It had no side windows and it was parked along um, one of the streets in this area. Police are asking anyone who thinks they may have seen this van on February 4th, 2003, uh, between the hours of 8 in the evening to 9.15 in the evening to contact them so that they can get any information from you. And I do think that it is interesting, you know, that after all these years, this was so long ago, that since 2003, the new tips continue to come out. And I think that that is very, you know, encouraging in this case. At the time of Sophia's disappearance, she was wearing a long sleeve red shirt, blue overalls. She had on violet socks and white tennis shoes. Sophia was missing her four top front teeth. Anyone with information is encouraged to call the Kennewick Sheriff's Department at 509-582-1331. I am very hopeful that this case can be resolved. 
Um, it has been a long time. I think that the information, I think that the information that was given by the witness, according to authorities, does seem credible and like the information is true. We know that Sophia was very shy. So if someone that she didn't know approached her, you know, it's probably likely that she would cry. She wouldn't just willingly go with this person. I honestly don't think that anybody in the house, Sophia's grandmother's boyfriend or anything like that, had anything to do with her disappearance. They were all questioned and ruled out. And it just does not seem um, suspicious to, to me. I don't know about you. Now, the TikTok video, that is very interesting. I mean, there is a slight possibility that it could be Sophia, right? This woman was um, abducted and she kind of resembles her. But we do have family members saying that it isn't Sophia. But how do we know? This woman could be someone's aunt. And she could also have this backstory where she was kidnapped. And then who would know where she actually came from? The woman also could have some type of mental health issues where she would make this claim and have it not be true. Um, we don't know. So hopefully the authorities will be able to find her, get some DNA so that we can confirm once and for all if it is Sophia. It would be great if she were found alive like this and she could be reunited with her family members. You know, that would be amazing. And her mother and her grandmother did go to Mexico, albeit a different part of Mexico, to look for Sofia. So it seems like, at least in their mind, they thought it was a possibility that she could have been abducted to Mexico. I don't, I wish I knew more as to why. Perhaps they had family members from that area. They thought maybe those family members had taken her. So again, you know, that makes it seem like possibly this woman in Mexico could be uh, Sophia. But at this point, we don't have confirmation of that. We just have to wait and see what happens. And if I hear anything about that, I will keep you updated on this channel. I am also happy to hear that the tips keep coming, that the authorities have not given up on this case, even after so many years. I'm glad to see that they are still making efforts to solve it, and that because of those efforts, more tips have come. I'm hoping that these tips can lead to a resolution so that her family can have closure one way or another, they deserve to know what happened to Sophia. And as you can see in her pictures, she looks like an adorable little child who, you know, at four years old, almost five, was just full of life. Um, so if something horrible happened to her, she deserves justice. Her family deser deserves closure. And they just deserve to know what happens, happened to her. So please, let me know what you think about this case. I would really like to hear your opinion. Do you think that there's any chance that this Unibi, um, who is living in Mexico, could possibly be Sophia? Do you see any resemblance? Um, what do you think happened to her? Do you think she was abducted by the person that the witnesses saw? Uh, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy hearing about missing person cases and spreading the word, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye.